I received no support for the trafficking. They were like, there's some mental health issues here. Here's medication. We can all move on with our life. And it wasn't until like years later that someone was like, why don't we stop the medication and work through all that trauma? The initial hurdles for me were completing my education. I wasn't able to complete high school because I was trafficked my senior year. So I had to first complete that and figure out how to do that. There were not a lot of resources available and what was available required a level of vulnerability that I couldn't provide. I had to tell my story to 20 different people within the school district because they didn't communicate with each other and then had to produce documents to prove my story from law enforcement in order to be able to finish high school. The biggest hurdles that I personally faced after um, leaving exploitation were what most people would consider very basic um, adult skills. I didn't have an ID or a driver's license and I didn't know how to get one. I had some problems with my criminal record that were entirely around when I was a minor. I had no charges as an adult and yet it was still drastically impacting me. I didn't know how to get a bank account or, you know, sign a lease or anything like that. And I was really struggling with job training and basic life skills. How to have a job interview, what do you wear to an interview? How do you communicate with people who aren't trying to buy you? I was 100% reliant on other people to help me get a bank account help me get this apartment, you know, co-sign for this car so I could drive around. My credit was ruined. I couldn't get a bank account because some of my exploiters were committing fraud on my accounts. And so I actually couldn't get any banks. And it's just that whole reliance. If that person doesn't want to, you know, help you out or they have stipulations. So you're kind of always in debt to someone and you really start to think like, I left a situation where someone controlled me and I'm still in a situation where someone kind of controls my life and you never truly feel free. I don't have a criminal record for what you might think of for someone who's been in sex trafficking. I ended up with, you know, like disorderly conduct, loitering, you know, um, disturbing the peace and, and things like that. And the issue with that is for myself as a trafficking survivor, I can't go to lawyers and, you know, or in certain states where they only expunge certain things and be like, can you take off this, you know, drunken disorderly because it was involved in trafficking and that did affect my ability to get employment. I am a criminal justice major. I really wanted to go into forensic interviewing. You cannot be a forensic interviewer with a criminal background and that followed me around and my criminal charge is in a state where you have to show up in person to expunge. I'm never going back there. It's not accessible for me to do that. I can't hire a private lawyer. So I have run into the issue where it's still on my record. Navigating the mental health arena was significantly traumatic in the beginning. I had brand new, fresh, complex PTSD that I did not know what to do with. And I had not heard the words human trafficking before. So it was very hard to identify myself to service providers so that they knew what it was that they were looking at, um, which made it very difficult for them to help me. Back then, there were not many people in the field who were trained in child sex abuse material or human trafficking. And this was kind of a common thing I've seen with other survivors where we, we go for mental health help um, and then we're instantly like, here's your diagnosis, here is the medication that you need, but like there's no underlying like, let's fix the trauma piece. We've really stepped forward as a community of survivors to create that curriculum and disseminate that training into these fields.
It's critical that we hear from survivors uh, specifically because they're the experts. We have a unique set of understanding. We didn't get it from a book, we lived it. There are thousands of us who own our own businesses, who offer consultations, who are seeking full-time equitable employment. And we don't have the resources that maybe a typical person would. We don't have the support of family or um, friends in that way, we have each other. We very much need the support of the community for our businesses and our lives to flourish.